Hi, it's Christopher Dean with part 9 of a tutorial series where we build a design system in Sketch. This time we're creating a pictogram, then animating it in After Effects for Lottie, so we can use it in native animations. Okay, let's cover what we're going to do. Design Systems Part 9, Animated Pictograms with After Effects and Lottie. In Part 8, we covered Iconography. Let's now follow a workflow that will allow us to create their big brothers and sisters called pictograms and animate them for the web, iOS and Android apps using After Effects and the animation library from Airbnb Design called Lottie. We'll bring in a set of three pictograms, explain what they are and recreate one of them at 128 by 128 pixels, structuring the file in a way that will allow it to be animated easily. After an introduction to After Effects, we'll install the Sketch to AE plugin and use it to bring in our pictogram directly from Sketch. As we animate inside After Effects, we'll learn about keyframes, nulls, easing and velocity, trim paths, and expressions. We'll install the Body Moving After Effects extension and use it to export the animation as a JSON file that can be displayed in a website and on native apps. We'll preview this file using the Lottie Files website and Lottie Preview app. If everything works, congratulate yourself and send the file to your developer and work with them to provide more context and delight for the people that use your products. And special thanks goes out to the people that have made this all possible, which are the team at Airbnb Design, uh, Sully Abdul Karim, Gabriel Peel and Brandon Withrow, the creator of the Body Moving Extension, Hernan Tarossi, and the people behind Lottie Files, Natu Adnan, Shafiu Hussein, and Sonam Paldin. I hope I pronounced all your names properly, and if I didn't, it's because I'm a Kiwi, and we use a weird type of English. So let's move on and get into abstract. And as always, go to the top right, select New Branch. We're going to call this one Animated Pictogram. I'm not going to say pictograms because we're only animating one. Once that branch is created, go over to the top right again and go edit and sketch. And here are all of the icons we created last time. We're going to duplicate this 24H2, turn on our layout settings, Move it down to about there and change it to 128. We're going to go back to our file that we were just reading from because in the symbols page, I've already created the three pictograms that we're going to look at today. And the reason I've done a store, a cart and a gift is this could be the onboarding screens for an e-commerce app that rewards you when you purchase things. So the first one could be selecting a store. The second one could be purchasing from that store. And when you purchase from that store, you get rewarded. We're going to grab all three of these and copy them and paste them in our main file. So let's go to the layers on the left and find the top icon. Just going to paste them in there. All of the styles have been stripped from these, so we're not going to get duplicates. And you do notice an extra style that we'll need, which is a black outline at two pixels center with the primary color on the inside. So let's quickly jump up to our styles. Select this one, duplicate it. Grab the one at the bottom, move it down to about there. And this time change it to fill, primary red, center, two pixels. Go up to this little cog on borders, give it rounded corners. And we're gonna call this shape forward slash line black forward slash two pixel 
forward slash center forward slash fill primary. There it is there. And it's up to you whether you want to put a forward slash after the word fill. I'm going to leave it like that for now. But we can jump back to our pictograms and set up the styles that are missing. So for this one, this one, and those lines, it's going to be shape, line black, two pixel center. This will be the style that we just created. There you go. Same thing for the cart. Select that. That's one of the textiles that we have. So let's go to DT P white center. The lid for this and the box and the ribbons at the top will all be shape line black, two pixel center. And this rectangle and this one will be center fill primary. Okay, let's recreate the icon gift one. Let's duplicate it and move it down. And let's just look at its layers. Now, once we bring this from Sketch into After Effects with the Sketch to AE plugin, everything that's a folder is gonna be turned into a null. So I'll talk about what a null is when we get over to After Effects, but in Sketch, you can imagine if I move the icon folder, it moves everything. If I move the lid folder, it just moves the lid. Same thing will happen in After Effects. That will become a null that we can move over. So let's just recreate this, take it into After Effects and talk more about it then. I'm gonna turn on the grid, delete everything in it, except for the bounding box. Zoom back out and let's recreate it. Hit R on your keyboard or create a rectangle and just drag from about here down Let's assign the shape style. And at the bottom, we've got no rounded corners at the top, left and top right, but at the bottom we've got rounded corners at the bottom left and the bottom right. So let's go over to rounded corners here and go zero, zero, two, Duplicate this, move it up, move it over one, resize it to about there. And this has two pixel rounded corners on all sides. So let's go to radius and change that to two. For the top part of the ribbon that's sitting on the lid, we're gonna duplicate the one we just made Resize it to 16 by 16. Clear the radius. Give it that new shared style. Duplicate it again, move it down a little bit. Okay, now we need the ribbons on the top. And I've found the easiest way to do this is to just duplicate one of the rectangles we just made Turn on the grid for the one above it. Hmm, and the box is too high. Let's move the lid down. Resize the box. Move that back down. 
and then make the ribbon something like 32 by 24. Okay, and this is where we go into edit the individual points. Select the top one and ramp up the rounded corner until it can't be done any further. So that's about 12. The one at the top right, it's going to get 12 as well. The point at the bottom left, we're going to select it and move it over. And that's actually something more like 20. The point at the top right, we're going to select it and move it over one. And the point at the bottom right, we're going to take off the rounded corner. Now, how does that look? This one's a bit rounder. So let's go back into editing it and ramp that up to about 20. That's looking more like it. It's going to clean up that style. I'm going to duplicate this, go to the top right and go flip horizontally. Then I'm going to move that over and place it. And there we go. Now let's organize it so it's easier to animate. Select the ribbon and that part and group them. We're going to call this box. Let's check if that's the same name here. Yep, I don't need a capital, so let's take that out. The lid, the lid ribbon, and the bow can all be grouped and all be called lid. Now it's good practice to name everything. So when it gets into After Effects, you can know what it is. So we're going to select that left bow and go bow left, bow right. Probably move that rectangle down here and go ribbon, lid, and then lid. Then we'll grab the box, let's just call that box, and this rectangle and call it ribbon, box. I'm gonna move the box folder underneath the lid. And just move that up and down. Yeah, that's working right. Grab them both, group them, and call this icon. Now when we move the icon, everything will be correct. Okay. Let's delete this one. Move this one up. And one thing we're gonna to have to do before we take it into After Effects is flatten the appearance of those bows. Let's take it into After Effects and I'll show you why. One more thing we're gonna to have to do is probably one more thing we're going to have to do, and one more thing we'll do is select elements like this that have the rounded corners added to them, probably even these ones, and flatten the appearance. And one more thing we're going to have to do before we get into After Effects is to flatten the appearance of anything that's got a rounded corner on it. Now we may be able to get away with the lid and the box, but these bows will probably end up looking a little bit weird once they get into After Effects using the Sketch2A plugin. And here we are at the Sketch2A landing page, and I'll put a link to this site and the other ones that we're going to go and visit and download things from in the description for this video. So go and grab that link, select download, probably save it to your desktop. I've also got the Airbnb Lottie web. And what you want to do there is select clone or download, select download zip, 
Save that to your desktop. Scroll down. Select ZXP installer link. That'll take you to this page. Then you can scroll down and select download Mac OS and save that to your desktop as well. Once you've done that for all three, go to your desktop and double click on sketch to AE master. Right click on this and make sure you install it in the latest version of sketch that you have. I've already got it installed, so I'm just going to select replace. And you can see that there's a sketch to a .jsx file. I'll show you where you're going to place that now. And in your After Effects folder on your hard drive, go to Scripts, Script UI Panels. You can see I've already got mine in there. And drag this over. That's for Sketch 2 AE installation. Let's now double click on the Lottie Web Master Zip. Go into Build, Extension. Go back to your desktop and double click on the ZXP installation DMG. Grab the ZXP installer and you can drag this to your desktop and run it from there. You don't have to drag it into applications, so I'm going to do that instead. Okay, we're going to open it and you can see I've already got the body moving extension in there but I'm going to drag this into it. You might get dialog boxes asking you to enter your password. I've told my system not to do that for now and that's done as well. Now if you go and open After Effects you'll be probably seeing the same thing that I'm seeing where it's in the Essentials mode. You can select different modes like Standard, Small Screen. I'm going to go to Window and select Workspace, Animation. Then I'm going to grab my Effects and Presets panel down here and drag it over here to the right until it snaps right at the end of the Timeline panel. After doing that, here's a quick tour of the interface. At the top you've got your tools, on the left, you've got your project panel. That's where you see all of your assets and you can organize them and rename them. In the middle, you've got the composition area where you get to see everything that's actually happening. On the right, pretty much like Sketches Inspector, you've got an inspector here as well. Lots of different things in there. Motion Sketch, Wiggler, what's that? Smoother, what's that? Audio, Info, you get the idea. Then at the bottom, Probably the most uh, powerful part of After Effects is the timeline. Now, let's just check that the Sketch 2 AE plugin was installed properly by going to Window. And there it is right at the bottom of this Sketch 2 AE. If we turn that on, we get a new panel. I'm going to resize it or even just drag it right into the top here until it hits the top of that info. And you can tell that's happening because you've got a little purple triangle at the top. There we go. Now let's check if the body moving extension installed. Let's go to window extensions and there it is. Now the body moving extension needs a bit more room. If you squashed it to that width, you wouldn't see anything. So let's just close it for now and reopen it when we need it. But for now, let's go back to sketch and using the sketch to AE plugin, move the pictogram into After Effects. With the pictogram selected, go up to Plugins, Sketch to AE, Copy Selected Layers. Go back to After Effects, and in the Sketch to AE panel, you've got Paste Layer Data from Clipboard, which is what we're going to use, or Open Layer, so you can save it from Sketch like you saw before. We're going to add New Comp. Let's just try it at one times and see what that comes up with. And then paste there. So that's just simply a command V. We didn't need to command C because it had already been copied that way from sketch. Let's go build layers. All right. 
Yeah, and you can see that everything came over nicely, except for those bows. We need to flatten their appearance. So let's undo this, go back to sketch. Just so it's non-destructive, I'm gonna duplicate this one. Give it a E at the end of it, and we'll delete this one after we're finished. Grab those two bows and go up to flatten the shape. Let's try that again. Plugins, sketch to AE, copy selected layers, and After Effects, paste it in. Uh, much better. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see the timeline is filled up with layers that are all named the same things that we named them in Sketch. And anytime you see that little hash there, that's a null. So let's move the box by selecting it. I'm gonna hold down Shift and move the arrows around. Same thing happens when we select the lid null and then the icon null moves everything. Fantastic. And from here, you just need to think about the type of animation you want. If this was going to be on a onboarding screen and you slid the screen into view, you'd probably want it to do something like bounce and then open the lid to show that you're going to get rewarded. So let's see what we can do to make that happen. Okay, I wanna see those nulls so I can control them better. So I'm gonna turn on the visibility for all of them and the bottom left here, you can see this little view icon. Let's turn everything on. Select the icon. And up the top left, you can see it's anchor point. That's that little target there. There. That's okay if that stays there. Now the lid's anchor point is at the top left. We want it to be at the bottom right. So when it opens, it does this instead of that. To do that, we're gonna grab that null, select it, hit Y on our keyboard. That'll allow us to move the anchor point down and it'll snap to the bottom right. We'll then go and select our select tool to get out of that mode. Let's see where the anchor point for the boxes. Okay, that's fine too. With those nulls all in the right place, let's just have a look at one of the other layers in the file and get to know it. So if we open bow R and then open contents, group one, stroke is the style that sketch had. You can see it's selected there. If we open that, you get control over pretty much everything. It's color, the opacity, the stroke width, Let's just ramp that up and down. Round cap or round join settings. And if we just close that, that's pretty much how everything else is built as well. So if we open box down the bottom, this one's got a rectangle path and its stroke is that. Let's have a look at that ribbon. This has got a stroke and a fill style. And there's the primary color right in there. Fantastic, everything's coming well. And the timeline, you can click and drag along. And we can see that we've already got one minute. We don't need that long. Let's go to the beginning, hit plus on our keyboard a couple of times until you get to about four seconds. Line up your playhead with four seconds. Hit N on your keyboard. That's gonna bring in the playable area. Right click on this and go trim comp to work area. Now we've only got four seconds to play around with it. Let's right click on the sequence, go Composition settings, and just check its frame rate. So 60 frames per second is pretty good for native animations. Just keep it at that. 
Everything else has come through okay. You can change the background color if you want, but we'll leave it white. Let's go back to the timeline and drag the playhead back to zero. We're gonna go over here to that little rectangle to the left of its number, open it, go transform, and here you've got control over anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. We're gonna set a keyframe, which is this little clock icon here, by just clicking it. And you can see that there's a little blue triangle right at the beginning there. That's a keyframe. And keyframes, if you know anything about animation, is setting the point where it starts and then setting another keyframe where it ends or setting multiple keyframes for advanced animations. We just want to set one there first, drag the timeline over to something like 30 frames, make sure we've selected the null and we're gonna shift arrow up four times. That's gonna make it jump. And if we go back, we can see that animating. All right, when it gets to the top, we're gonna get it to come back down. And to make sure it lands exactly where it was before, we're gonna grab this keyframe, copy it by going Command C, and where the playhead is positioned at one, go Command V. And if we play that by going back to the beginning and pressing the space bar, you can see it just do that. Well, that's okay, but it needs to be more realistic, more organic. We're going to select that middle keyframe, right click on it, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. That means it's going to start off, float a little bit and then come down. And now we're going to get into keyframe velocity. Right click again on the one we just set to easy ease, go to keyframe velocity and change this default setting of 33.33333 to something like 80 for both. And if we take a look at this, it's saying the incoming velocity is gonna start and then slow down. It's also gonna slow down on the out and then speed up. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's a bit more realistic now. It gets a bit of hang time. We want it to bounce naturally when it lands. Now you could do that by setting up multiple keyframes, like going along, setting another one, moving it up, going along, setting another one, moving it down. What we are gonna do is use an expression. So in the sketch file that's explaining everything we're gonna do in this part, I've made an artboard that has two expressions in it. One of them is called bounce back, which is what we need here. The other one's called bounce inertia, which is something that we can probably use on the lid when it opens. So back in sketch, let's move over from the intro to the expressions artboard. This is the bounce back one. We're gonna grab this one first, which basically means selecting all the text in here, copying it, going back to After Effects, and we're gonna hold down Alt on your keyboard, and at the same time, click the stopwatch that is setting our keyframes. If it's done that correctly for you, you can see the keyframes light up as red, and it's already asking you to enter text. We're gonna paste that into there, just press enter, then we're gonna click out into the composition window. Okay, we didn't get any errors, maybe that worked. Let's see if it did. Okay, no bouncing. Okay, we didn't see anything, so we need to go and change some of the parameters. Let's click into this window here. So let's go to something like 100. Play it again. And that's more like it. If we loop that from two seconds by hitting N on the keyboard and just pressing play, you can see that bouncing quite nicely. As soon as it gets close to settling, we want the lid to open. So let's just stop it, see where that happens. Okay, at about two seconds. 
We're going to go and select the lid null. We're going to open and go to transform, go to rotation and set a keyframe. We're going to go to about 30 frames after that and then drag rotation. So the right hand side of it and you'll see it open. We don't want to hit the top. So we're going to go at about 10 degrees. If we just play that, it happens quite slowly. So let's bring that back into 15 frames. Okay, and that opens, but when it does it, we kind of want to make it go like this. So we need that other expression. Before we go and grab it, let's right click on the keyframe at two seconds for the lid null. Go to keyframe assistant and go easy ease out. That's going to make it open slow and then speed up like that. Let's go grab the other expression and bring it in. Okay, select all of this, put bounce back, copy it, and go back to After Effects. Just like we did before, we're going to hold down Option, click on the rotation keyframe, and paste. Click out into the composition window, and we'll see what that looks like. Good. The default settings are pretty good. Let's go forward and stop at three seconds, hit N on our keyboard and play the whole animation. Jump, open. Okay, that's looking pretty good, but the lid can probably open before it settles completely. So let's go to one second and 30 frames, drag and select both of those keyframes and move them over. If you hold down shift, it's easier to snap keyframes to where you are in the playhead. Let's preview that. Okay, still happening too late. Let's try at 15. Drag them over again. Yeah, not bad. I think the bounce in the beginning can be faster as well. So let's go and see what we can do there. So maybe it jumps up slow and comes down fast. So we're going to move the keyframe for the icon null from one second over to here. And we're going to go back down and move these two to where this is. Now that expression is probably going to make it bounce a bit more now because it's coming down faster, but let's see. Yeah, just like I thought. Okay. We're going to grab this, change the frequency to 0.5. Okay. How does that look? Let's just play it out. I'm going to set the end frame to two seconds this time. Press N. I think we need to increase the gravity a little bit. Something like 150. Okay, that's looking much better. And here's a quick shortcut. You can select an item in the timeline and hit U on your keyboard. That'll close everything and just show the keyframes that you've set. Let's try it again for the lid null as well. Okay, so that's a bit of a cleaner view. Do that again. Okay. You could add a third animation here and have the bows draw on. That's where we're gonna use trim parts. So let's select the bows. Go down, go to contents, group one. With group one selected, so you see it become a lighter shade of gray. Go to add over here. You can see this little arrow. Go down to trim paths. And if we open it and play around with the start setting, 
you can see it draw on. Okay. I'm just going to drag it to about 5% because I want to reset the offset down here. So the start draw point is the top of the box. We're going to take start back down to zero and end to zero as well. So there's nothing there. We're then going to create a keyframe at one second and 15 frames for the end variable in the trim path for the bow right. Then drag along to 45 frames and move end back up to 100%. And that'll draw in the bow like this. Now we kind of want to make it start out slow, speed up and then end slow. So right click the first keyframe, go to keyframe assistant and go easy ease out. Right click the end keyframe and go easy ease in. And another thing that After Effects can show you is if you've got a keyframe selected, you can go up to here, which is the graph editor, select that and you can see how it starts off slow, goes to normal and then comes in. Here's where you can drag these. So that gets a little bit exaggerated and that's going to override that velocity setting we set in the previous keyframes. Let's close that by selecting it again and do that for bow left. Same thing again, open, go to contents, group one, select group one, go to the add arrow over here, go down to trim paths, and let's see if it's the same thing here. Let's go to zero. Actually, let's reset where it's going to draw from. There we go. Let's open them both up to 100 for start and end. Go to one second and 30 frames. Set a keyframe at start. Go along to two seconds and bring it back down to zero. Change the first keyframe to easy ease out and the last keyframe to easy ease in. Okay, let's close that up and watch the whole animation. Let's see what we got. Not bad. Let's extend this out to three seconds so we can see the open bow for a little bit longer. Hit N on your keyboard. Go back to the beginning, press the space bar. All right, what happened? I'm wearing a different shirt. Well, last night the camera went out of battery and it was about quarter to one in the morning. It's now 10.21 on Monday night. So let's finish this, okay? Okay, I want this to become a looping animation. So I'm gonna, with the lid, Null selected, drag and select both of its keyframes. Command C though, so just copy them. With the playhead set at two seconds, paste them. Right click on them both when they're still selected and go keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. We're now gonna hold down command and click on them both. That's gonna reset them. And we're going to right click on the first one and go keyframe assistant, easy ease out. On the last one, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And that's going to do this with a little bit of a bounce. Okay, we want those ribbons to close as well. I know they just came out. But at 15 frames past two seconds, open bow right. Let's go down and see bow left as well. Okay, so this one needs to close first. And we'll do something different here. We're gonna keyframe start at two seconds and 15 keyframes. We're gonna to go to 45 keyframes and drag this up to 100. Go to the first one, 
keyframe assistant, easy ease out. Last one, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And that's going to close it at two seconds and 30 frames. We're going to go down and do the same thing, but this time with bow left, we've got end to keyframe. At the very end, at three seconds, we're going to take this back down to zero. And just like the one above it, keyframe assistant, easy ease out. Right at the end, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. All right, let's see what we have. Okay, the next step is to get this from here into a exported JSON file via body moving. So let's go to window, extension, body moving. All right, what do we have here? We've got the comp come up in this list. So let's select it. We're then going to click on settings. And what is all this? Most of it I don't even know. But what I do every time is I keep glyphs selected and the only other one I've used is ABD, which is at the bottom. That's Android Vector Drawable. So if you're having trouble with uh, working in a company that has adopted Lottie in iOS, but not Android, you can export it as this format and the Android developer will be able to use it there. But for now, we're gonna keep everything at its default settings and go save. The one over here is the destination. So let's click on that. It's gonna open up Finder and I'm just gonna place mine on the desktop. But I'm gonna call it icon gift128. Now, Let's select a render and see if it works. Okay, done. And I already know there's gonna be an issue, but I wanna demonstrate that to you first. Okay, this is the Lottie Files website. You can use it to preview your Lottie Files or your JSON file that you just spat out with the body moving extension. If we go to Lottie Preview up the top right here, just says drag and drop your JSON animation file here to preview. Let's do that. Ooh, it's broken. Look at it sliding over there to the side. Okay, we can see that it's not doing anything like that here, but one issue that Lottie has sometimes is with expressions. So we've got a few expressions running here we're gonna to have to bake the expression keyframes. So go up to your project panel, duplicate this, I'm going Command D. Let's keep this one as the backup. Double click on this one. Select the keyframes for each layer that have a expression assigned to them. Anything you see lit up on red. Let's select them. Right click, go to keyframe assistant, then convert expressions to keyframes. And it's good to keep a backup in case you wanna modify your animation because once you've done this, it's completely destructive. Trying to change your animation from here is gonna be quite hard. Let's go through the other layers and bake their expressions in the same way. none there, none there. Okay, that should be about it. Everything still looks the same. We just now have a keyframe for every time the element moves. All right, let's spit it out with body moving again and see what we get. Just resize this so we can make sure that we've got only the first one selected. We're gonna rewrite over the other one. 
by just hitting render again. Okay, let's select done. Go back and try dragging that file into the Lottie files preview site again. Okay, fingers crossed. Okay, and everything's fixed. Fantastic. It's looping well. The bounce back and bounce inertia are working great. The trim paths look pretty cool. They draw in and then draw out. Okay, and then what's over here on the bottom right? This is a QR code that you're going to scan with the Lottie Preview app. Just go to the Play Store or the App Store and search for Lottie Preview. And here's the interface. It's pretty simple. It's waiting to scan that QR code. So let's do that and see what happens. It's just thinking and there we are. All right, let's go back to sketch, select and delete this duo AE version. Turn off the grid on this one. Zoom back out. Save where we are. Go down here to the abstract toolbar and select preview and commit. Enter animated pictogram, done. And then commit changes at the bottom right. All right, that's up to date. Go to the top right and select merge branch. Select merge and archive. And if we scroll down, there's our new pictograms. All right, that's it for this part. The next part is gonna be another community updates edition and there's a lot to do. So stick around for that one and I'll see you next time. Bye.